There's one version of Titanic we have never seen until this morning. That's right. Experts have used special technology to map the entire ship on the ocean floor and create its digital twin. The grand staircase is gone, and the once elegant dining halls have caved in. Yet deep inside the Titanic's first-class quarters, one cabin door stayed sealed for more than a hundred years. Recently, a new underwater drone finally managed to slip inside, and what it captured stunned everyone, from marine biologists to historians. Inside wasn't just furniture miraculously preserved, nor old luggage frozen in time. It was something else, something no one could have imagined, resting silently in the dark. The discovery has shaken our understanding of the deep sea and rewritten the story of the world's most legendary shipwreck. The tomb has been opened. The most astonishing part of the expedition was how well some areas of the Titanic were preserved. As the drone moved through the narrow, suffocating corridors, its bright LED lights revealed scenes that seemed frozen in time. In one section of the first-class promenade, a row of deck chairs lay overturned, blanketed in a century's worth of silt, yet almost perfectly intact. But the most haunting discoveries weren't the grand structures. They were the small, personal details. The camera panned over a pair of leather shoes resting neatly side by side on the cabin floor, as if their owner had just slipped them off moments before. Nearby, a porcelain doll sat against a mound of debris, its lifeless glass eyes staring into the dark. Its once white dress had faded to a ghostly gray. When the drone drifted upward toward the site of the legendary grand staircase, all that remained of its magnificence was absence. The ornate woodwork, long devoured by microbes, had vanished, leaving behind a vast, hollow void, like a wound at the ship's core. Yet as the light swept across the edges, they caught the faint glimmer of twisted iron railings, remnants of the ship's former elegance. The sight was breathtaking, both beautiful and tragic, reminding everyone of what once was. But the most incredible moment came when the drone squeezed through a collapsed doorway into a section never before explored. It appeared to be a steward's pantry. Stacks of china were still neatly arranged on the shelves, held in place by fallen debris. A rack of wine bottles, many still intact, lay half buried in the silt. It felt as if time itself had stopped. The frigid, oxygen poor water had slowed decay to almost nothing. But then, the camera caught something extraordinary. Beneath a fallen cabinet, partially buried, was what looked like a leather bound journal. Even through the drone's feed, the team could see it was tightly sealed its pages untouched for over a century, its secrets still waiting to be revealed. Finding an object like this after more than a century underwater is almost impossible. Its survival defies logic. What could it contain? What stories has it held onto all these years? But what most people don't realize is how dangerous this kind of exploration really is. Every move the drone makes is a gamble. One wrong turn and its fiber optic tether could snag on a sharp edge of metal trapping it forever in the ship's rusted remains. Even stirring up too much sediment could create a thick, blinding cloud, leaving the pilot completely disoriented inside the maze of collapsing steel. The team had to move with surgical precision through this underwater graveyard, fully aware that the wreck is incredibly fragile. Ceilings could cave in, walls could crumble, and the smallest vibration could cause irreversible damage. You can feel that tension in the footage, in the slow, cautious movements of the drone like a dancer gliding carefully through a forgotten tomb. The first phase of the mission was a success, but it raised more questions than it answered. The eerie preservation, the sealed leather journal, it all hinted at something bigger, and what came next would turn curiosity into unease. They called this mission Sentinel of the Deep. But how did a machine manage to go where no human ever could? The answer lies in the drone itself. This wasn't a typical remote-controlled gadget. It was a masterpiece of modern engineering, designed to survive one of the most extreme environments on Earth. The Titanic rests nearly 12,500 feet below the surface. Down there, the pressure is staggering, over 6,000 pounds per square inch. That's like having three pickup trucks pressing down on every inch of your body. Anything made from ordinary materials would be crushed instantly. This drone, however, was built to endure and to uncover the secrets that time thought it had buried forever. To survive the crushing depths, 
The drone's body was crafted from a special titanium alloy, the same material used in military submersibles and even spacecraft. It's built to be unbelievably strong yet remarkably light. Its camera sits behind a thick lens made of synthetic sapphire, several inches deep, capable of withstanding the intense water pressure without distorting the image. What many don't realize is just how advanced the drone's power and communication systems are. It's linked to the surface ship by a miles-long tether, not just a cable, but a bundle of fiber-optic wires that deliver real-time high-definition video while supplying power to its motors and lights. And light down there means everything. At these depths, the ocean is pitch black, a world of eternal night. The drone's powerful LED panels can throw a beam of white light more than a hundred feet through the murky darkness. But lighting the deep sea isn't as simple as turning on a flashlight. If the lights are too bright or angled wrong, they illuminate marine snow, tiny drifting particles of organic matter, creating a dazzling white blizzard that blinds the camera. To avoid this, the pilots constantly adjust the light's strength and direction. It's less science, more intuition, a kind of underwater art. Navigating inside a crumbling shipwreck like the Titanic is another challenge entirely. The interior is a twisted labyrinth of collapsed decks, hanging wires, and jagged steel. To maneuver through it, the drone relies on a network of 12 thrusters. Unlike typical drones with four propellers, these thrusters are placed all around its body, allowing it to move with surgical precision, forward, backward, sideways, up, down, and even spin perfectly in place. On the surface, pilots guide it using a futuristic control setup, Multiple monitors showing live camera feeds, sensors, and joystick controls that look straight out of a science fiction film. But the real marvel lies in the silent partner assisting them, an artificial intelligence co-pilot. While humans steer, the AI constantly scans the surroundings with sonar, building a live 3D map of the wreck. If the drone drifts too close to a wall or a sharp edge, the AI automatically fires its thrusters to push it away reacting faster than any human ever could. It's a built-in guardian, ensuring the machine survives the most treacherous passages. This cutting-edge system allows the drone to slip through corridors barely wider than itself, capturing scenes no one has ever witnessed before. It's not just a machine. It's more like a mechanical ghost, a sentient explorer gliding through the silent halls of the Titanic. Thanks to this incredible technology, Humanity can finally see the ship's remains up close, the slow, beautiful decay of history preserved beneath the waves. For years, everything we knew about the Titanic came from exterior photos and sonar scans. We had a clear picture of the outside, but the inside remained a mystery, a dark, unreachable world that existed only in speculation. What few realize is that this new drone footage is far more than eerie visuals from the deep. It's transforming our understanding of the wreck. For the first time in history, scientists are building a complete three-dimensional map of the Titanic's interior. This isn't just a small breakthrough. It's a revolution. Using a method called photogrammetry, thousands of ultra-high-definition images captured by the drone are analyzed by computers to measure distances and angles, creating a precise digital replica of the ship. This digital twin is revealing stunning new details about both the Titanic's final moments and the century-long decay that followed. For decades, it was believed the ship split neatly into two major sections as it sank. But the new interior mapping tells a different story, one that's far more chaotic and violent. Footage from deep within the stern shows massive internal ruptures and twisted beams, evidence that the ship was torn apart with unimaginable force. Engineers now see that internal stresses played a much greater role than anyone suspected. With this new data, they've been able to run advanced simulations of the sinking, revealing a far more brutal picture of how the unsinkable ship met its end. The model also exposes how uneven the wreck's decay has been. Some rooms once believed to be destroyed are still partially intact, while others thought to be stable are on the verge of total collapse. Perhaps the most shocking revelation is how quickly the Titanic is disintegrating. Comparing the new scans with earlier surveys shows that the wreck is deteriorating much faster than expected. The captain's bathtub, once a haunting symbol from past dives, has vanished, fallen through the deck. The main mast has crumbled, 
and huge portions of the upper structure are peeling away like old paint. The culprit? A colony of iron-eating bacteria slowly devouring the ship from the inside out. These microbes form strange, icicle-shaped growths called rusticles, which hang from the hull like red-brown stalactites, silent proof that the ship is literally being eaten alive. And amid all this destruction, the 3D mapping has reignited interest in one haunting detail, the sealed leather journal discovered in the steward's pantry. What could it reveal about those final hours before the Titanic slipped beneath the waves? Using the new digital model, researchers can now study the exact room where the journal was found, without ever touching the wreck itself. They can examine the debris field, trace how the cabinet collapsed, and plan a future recovery mission with surgical precision and minimal disturbance to the fragile environment. It's like conducting a virtual archaeological dig, one pixel at a time. This level of planning and accuracy was unthinkable just a few years ago. But as with everything surrounding the Titanic, not all discoveries are easy to explain. The mapping revealed several strange anomalies, features that simply don't fit. In one of the cargo holds, the drone detected a large, oddly shaped object that appears nowhere in the ship's blueprints or cargo records. It's buried under a thick layer of sediment, its true identity still hidden. Could it be a piece of broken machinery? Or something entirely unexpected? That single mystery has set off a storm of speculation. The digital model is a powerful scientific tool, but it's also become a kind of treasure map, guiding researchers toward new questions and deeper secrets waiting to be uncovered. Yet, amid the excitement, a haunting truth lingers. This isn't just a shipwreck, it's a grave. When the Titanic went down, more than 1,500 passengers and crew lost their lives. For over a century, the cold depths have served as their final resting place, untouched and silent. The drone's journey inside has brought back breathtaking discoveries, but it also forces us to confront an uncomfortable question. How far should we go in the name of exploration? Where is the line between uncovering history and disturbing the dead? This moral dilemma has surrounded the Titanic ever since it was rediscovered, but the intimate footage from inside has made it more personal and more pressing than ever. The team leading the mission understood this deeply. Many described feeling a heavy sense of reverence, even guilt, as they guided the drone through the wreck's silent corridors. Before the expedition began, they sought advice from historians, maritime archaeologists, and even the descendants of Titanic survivors determined to ensure that their work honored, rather than violated, the memory of those who perished. The team ultimately agreed that the mission had to be carried out with the highest level of respect, treating the Titanic not as a research site, but as a memorial to the lives lost there. Strict guidelines were put in place. The drone was forbidden from touching anything inside the wreck and was programmed to keep a safe distance from any possible human remains. But what many didn't expect was the emotional impact the new footage would have on the public. While millions watched in awe, others found it profoundly unsettling. For descendants of the victims, seeing personal belongings, a suitcase, a pair of shoes, a child's doll, was heartbreaking. These objects are more than relics. They are frozen moments of unimaginable tragedy. Families feel torn. On one hand, they want to see and understand more about what happened that night. On the other, they believe the wreck should be left undisturbed, a sacred resting place that deserves peace. There's no clear answer, and that tension plays out everywhere, from online discussions to academic debates. What many don't realize is that the Titanic isn't protected like a traditional graveyard. It lies in international waters, where no single nation has full authority over it. This legal gray area has led to decades of controversy, salvage operations, tourism, and even private expeditions competing for access. Some groups continue to fight for the wreck to be officially recognized and preserved as a maritime memorial, while others argue that recovering artifacts for museums helps keep the story alive for future generations. Both sides share a common goal, to remember, but they differ deeply on how that remembrance should look beneath the waves. The new drone footage revealing how quickly the Titanic is deteriorating has reignited a fierce debate. Some believe that important artifacts, like the sealed leather journal, must be recovered before time and the sea erase them forever. Others insist the ship should be left undisturbed, 
allowed to slowly return to nature as a monument to those who perished. For the exploration team, each new image brought a difficult choice. What do you do when the camera reveals something deeply personal, a locket, a child's toy, or that haunting porcelain doll? These aren't just objects, they're pieces of real lives, frozen in time. In the end, the team decided to release the footage in a way that honors the human story, the tragedy, the memory, and the emotion, rather than focusing on the technology or the idea of underwater treasure. Their goal was to transform exploration into remembrance. Yet, even with that care, the line between respectful documentation and intrusion remains razor thin. Each dive pushes us closer to understanding the past, but also risks crossing into sacred ground. This new chapter in the Titanic story is only beginning, and it forces us to ask a haunting question. Should we keep exploring this underwater grave, or let the ocean keep its secrets? What do you think? Share your thoughts below and join us again for more journeys into the unknown.